What's up everybody, Kier Gomes here and welcome back. Today we're gonna to be learning a cart control. Let's go. All right, so today, today is the day we're gonna be going over the straddle pass. I'm super excited. As you guys can tell from the intro, it is a card control. You can use it to get a card from the middle to the bottom or to the top. It's a very nice control. I like it a lot. It's something that I use sometimes. But overall, it's just one that I love to practice. And since we're all stuck at home not performing anyway, might as well have something new. But before I forget, I do wanna say thank you to today's sponsor, that is Card Cuts. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be doing a quick high level review of the Neoterra playing cards. All right, so let's get into the tutorial. But before we do, please don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Grab some cards. Let's go. Today's episode is brought to you by Card Cuts and the Neoteric Playing Cards. These are the latest and greatest from the Card Cut shop. So if you guys want to know more about these, make sure you stick around until after the tutorial. All right, so the straddle pass, that is what we are gonna be learning today. This is gonna be a fun one. Uh, the straddle pass is a variation of the pass. It's probably one of the easiest ones, but as well, it is very practical, it's something that you can use all the time. Uh, but it's basically just a way, just like all passes, to control a card to either the top or the bottom of the deck. So if we take the ace of spades here, you can see we put it fairly in the middle, complete our pass, and it is now on the bottom. And similarly, if you wanna do it to the top, you would just repeat that same thing, but face up. And now it's on the top. Now that's obviously at an exposed angle. This is a tutorial after all, but there is ways to protect yourself depending on what angle you're at. Uh, you can make it a little bit more, I guess, invisible. All right, so to complete this pass, uh, the thing that I like the most about this is that it is unlike a regular like classic pass or the Herman pass, uh, it doesn't disturb the order of the other cards. So this is definitely a good control if you have your cards like in a stack that you wanna maintain or if you have a certain part of the deck stacked, uh, it's definitely good for that. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is take a card. This can be a spectator selection. You can pull it off the top, pull it out of the bottom, whatever, and just, riffle it and put it somewhere in the middle of the deck. Pretty sure you guys can handle that. So the card is fairly in the middle of the deck and if you guys are familiar with the diagonal palm shift, we are gonna do a very similar technique to start with. If you're not familiar with the diagonal palm shift, I do have a tutorial on it and I will make sure that that pops up somewhere around here. All right, so you take your card, riffle down, drop it off somewhere in the middle and now we're gonna do this. We're gonna push the card in only instead of pushing it in straight, like you normally would, we're gonna angle it just a little bit towards your thumb. Enough so, so that the corner of the card is sticking out here, and then you're gonna start pushing it in, and it's gonna go into this kind of position here, okay? And that is gonna allow you to grab the card with your thumb and pinky, and then pass it out. So let me show you that in slow motion, we'll take the two of clubs goes into the middle. Now at this point it can be straight, but when you go to push it in, angle it a little bit towards your thumb, just like that. And we're gonna be looking for this type of situation, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull with your thumb and pinky 
you're gonna strip the card out and then pull it under the deck and then it goes to the bottom. Let me see if I can find a better angle for, uh, for that exact thing. Okay, I think I'm in close enough and at enough of an angle where you should be able to see this. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Okay, hopefully that's in focus, I can't really tell. So you're gonna take the card, riffle, and then you're gonna push diagonal again out towards your thumb. So for me, I'm pushing with my right hand, I'm pushing to the left. Just at a slight angle so that way in my thumb, I can contact the corner like that. And with my pinky, I can continue pulling the card out. Okay, so now at this point, you can get about this far before you can get your ring and middle on the card, and then you're just gonna pull the card out and flatten it under the deck. So again, the card goes in the middle. I'm gonna get as close as possible so you can see everything that's happening. You're gonna push towards your thumb and grab the card. Then with this hand, you can put your thumb and whatever looks natural. And then under that cover, you're gonna pull the card as far as you can get it until you can get these fingers on the card. Now what you're gonna do is just, and this is what it looks like from the front, by the way. So it looks like you just push the card in the middle and maybe now you're squaring up the cards. And then this is what's going on. You're pulling and you're flattening and then it's on the bottom. So you're doing boom, boom, diagonal, and then pass. And now the card is controlled. Just like that. It's actually a pretty good angle. So if you wanna do this, uh, like to control a card to the top of the deck, which is I think uh, just as powerful depending on what your effect is trying to be. But uh, ultimately what you wanna do is the same exact moves, but you just wanna do it face up. So this is a really good opportunity to have your spectator either pick their own card um, or name one out loud. So your spectator, let's say that they say um, that they want the, let's say that they call out the six of spades. Okay, probably not gonna happen, but let's say they do. You can take out the six of spades and now this means means even more of a miracle because the spectator knows that they freely selected this card. So you can put it into the middle, boom, drag it, grab, pass it, and then when you turn over the deck, it is waiting for you on the top. Now there's other things that this method can be combined with. So for example, if we take the five of hearts, I can control it to the bottom using the pass. And then when I'm squaring up the deck, I can get it into a gambler's cop and say, okay, so your card's not here on the bottom and you can see it's not on the top, shake the deck, do whatever, and now it is on the bottom. So you can essentially control a card to the bottom, get it into a cop, show the deck, and then when you slide it in, you can just load the card right under it and you are in prime position now to rub it on your hand or do whatever you want and then reveal the card. Okay, so now that we've seen a little bit more, this is ultimately what we're doing. Let's just go over it one more time. Ace of diamonds, riffle into the middle, push it in at an angle towards your thumb, grab, pull out, and then You're good to go. One more time. We're gonna take the card in the middle, push in at an angle, and then you can see now that it's in, I'm in prime position to drag the card with my thumb and pinky, and then I can pull the card right out of the middle and under the deck. The hardest part is just gonna be getting that natural movement to where it looks so fast and so smooth that nobody would really know what you did. All right, so there is the slide. It's pretty simple. I think in terms of the pass, it's definitely the easiest one. But again, I also really like it because it doesn't disturb the order of the rest of the card. So it doesn't actually cut the deck, which I guess does leave it a lot cleaner and a lot better, I guess. 
I don't know. In general, it's just something that I love to practice, so now you know how to do it. But if you are gonna be performing this for your friends, family, your mom, your cat, anybody, you're probably gonna wanna know some angles, so let's talk about it. Okay, so angles wise, uh, like I mentioned in showing you this, this, uh, if it's exposed, can be really, really ugly. So you can see at an exposed angle, it's pretty obvious that something is happening in this motion. So anytime you're doing a pass of any kind, you typically want to have your spectator angled and looking down at your hands. That will provide you with some cover. So let's keep it in frame this time. Now, the higher up I am, the easier it is to see the move when I do it. The lower you can get your spectator to go, the easier it is to kind of hide that motion with your other hand. Now it helps if you're like me, I have giant hands. so. It is a little bit easier for me to hide those motions, but the most important thing that you can learn is just to find a natural way to draw people's gaze down at your hands so you can, you can kind of keep your hands low and then you can pull off pretty much any version of the pass a little bit easier. Now, if you're doing this for the camera, it doesn't matter. Just make sure your camera is angled down at you or somewhere where the, uh, the middle of the deck can be hidden and the bottom of the deck can stay as low as possible. All right, so now you know a new slight, you got something new to practice. For those of you that are still watching this video and wanted to know more about the Neoteric playing cards, let's get into it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. You got a little deck review, you got a hot tutorial, you got something new to practice, and that's all that matters. Big shout out again and a thank you to Card Cuts for sending me some decks. I really do like these, they're pretty cool. They also just recently launched a mobile app. So for those of you that like to shop cards but don't appreciate the not mobile friendly versions of websites, head on into the App Store if you're an Apple user and if not, go to the Google Play Store and download the Card Cuts app. I will make sure that the link and proper spelling is all down below. Thank you guys again so much for watching today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, let me know by dropping a big fat thumbs up. And while you're down there, you might as well subscribe and hit that notification bell for more awesome content just like this. And with all that being said, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day. I know I will. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.